All right, a mega church leader has resigned, accused of sexually abusing a child decades ago. Robert Morris, now no longer the pastor of Gateway Church in Southlake, one of the largest churches in the country. In recent years, Gateway Church, a prominent mega church founded by Robert Morris, has found itself at the center of a series of disturbing allegations and legal battles that have not only rocked the church leadership, but also sent shockwaves through its congregation and the broader Christian community. The most recent and arguably most devastating event occurred just two months before Robert Morris's resignation over explosive allegations of child sex abuse. This development followed the settlement of a significant lawsuit in which at least five Gateway Church pastors and a youth leader were accused of concealing the sexual assault of a minor by another church member. Filed in Tarrant County, Texas, in August 2020, the lawsuit brought by a minor identified as A.D., and her mother cast a dark shadow over the church's handling of serious allegations within its community. The named defendants included Gateway Church, Denise Edwards, youth leader Logan Edwards, Doe Vaughn, and pastors Kelly Jones, Rebecca Wilson, Samantha Golden, Mondo Davis, and Sion Alford. The plaintiffs, both active members of Gateway Church, sought damages ranging from more than $200,000 to $5 million, citing gross negligence and a breach of fiduciary duty by the church leadership. The lawsuit revealed a deeply troubling scenario. March 14, 2018, the minor was sexually assaulted by an unnamed member at the member's personal residence. In his capacity as a youth leader, Logan Edwards allegedly learned of the assault through conversations with the perpetrator and other youth. Despite being aware of the allegations, the youth leader, along with several pastors, failed to report the incident to Child Protective Services, law enforcement, or even the minor's mother. Instead, they purportedly engaged in a campaign to conceal the assault, discredit the victim and her mother, and obstruct the police investigation. This alleged cover-up not only caused immense emotional distress and public embarrassment to the plaintiffs, but also resulted in significant evidence degrading, further complicating the investigation. The church settled the case on April 18, 2022, through a confidential agreement in which the defendants admitted no liability, asserting that the settlement was to buy peace. This settlement, however, did little to quell the controversy and distrust that had begun to brew within the congregation. As members grappled with the implications of these allegations, the revelation of Robert Morris's past misconduct added fuel to the fire. Cindy Clemisher, now 54, accused Morris of sexually abusing her starting on December 25, 1982, when she was just 12 years old. According to Clemisher, the abuse continued for over four years before Morris was discovered. Yet he was later allowed to return to ministry, a decision that raised significant ethical and moral questions about the church's stance on accountability and protection of its members. In light of these allegations, the Gateway Church Board of Elders accepted Morris's resignation and retained the law firm Haynes & Boone LP to conduct an independent inquiry. The board expressed a strong commitment to uncovering the truth and holding individuals accountable, despite the abuse occurring long before the church was established. They emphasize the importance of protecting children and vulnerable individuals within their congregation, vowing to cooperate fully with the investigation. This response aimed to restore some measure of trust and integrity within the church community, which had been severely shaken by the revelations. The situation at Gateway Church is a stark reminder of the potential for abuse of power within religious institutions and the crucial need for robust mechanisms to report and address such abuses. These events underscore the importance of transparency, accountability, and the prioritization of safety and well-being of all members, particularly minors, particularly minors. The failure of church leaders to report the allegations and their subsequent efforts to conceal the truth reflect a gross violation of trust and responsibility, raising questions about the culture and governance within Gateway Church. As the independent inquiry by Haynes and Boone, LP proceeds, there is a hopeful anticipation within the congregation and the wider Christian community for a thorough and unbiased investigation. The findings and subsequent actions taken by the church will be critical in determining its future direction and ability to rebuild trust. This case also serves as a powerful reminder of the need for faith communities to maintain vigilance, 
compassion, and justice in addressing and preventing abuse. The real and lasting impact of abuse, the real and lasting impact of abuse on victims cannot be overstated, and the stories of a and Cindy Clemisher highlight the urgent need for systemic changes to ensure the safety and protection of all members. In addition to these legal and ethical challenges, the church must also contend with the broader implications for its ministry and outreach. The scandal has undoubtedly damaged its reputation, potentially affecting attendance, financial support, and community engagement. Church leaders must now work diligently to demonstrate their commitment to transparency and accountability implementing measures to prevent future incidents and to support survivors of abuse. This includes fostering an environment where allegations can be reported safely and handled with the seriousness they deserve, providing training and resources for staff and volunteers, and establishing clear protocols for responding to allegations of abuse. Furthermore, the impact on the congregation must be considered. Many members may feel disillusioned or betrayed by the church's handling of these allegations, leading to a potential decline in trust and engagement. Pastoral care and counseling will be essential in helping the congregation navigate these turbulent times, providing support and reassurance as they process the revelations and their implications. Open communication from church leaders about the steps being taken to address the issues and prevent future incidents will be crucial in rebuilding trust and fostering a sense of community and accountability. As the church navigates this challenging period, it also has the opportunity to lead by example, demonstrating a commitment to justice, transparency, and the well-being of its members. By taking decisive action and prioritizing the safety and protection of all individuals within the church community, Gateway Church can begin to rebuild its reputation and restore the trust of its congregation and the broader community. This case serves as a powerful reminder of the responsibilities that come with leadership and the importance of creating a safe and nurturing environment for all members. In conclusion, the events at Gateway Church highlight the critical need for accountability, transparency, and a steadfast commitment to the safety and well-being of all members within religious institutions. The church's response to these allegations will be instrumental in determining its future direction and ability to rebuild trust and integrity within its community. As the independent inquiry proceeds, there is hope for a thorough and unbiased investigation that will bring clarity and justice, paving the way for systemic changes that will protect the vulnerable and ensure that faith communities remain safe and nurturing spaces for all members. The stories of A.D. and Cindy Clemisher serve as powerful reminders of the real and lasting impact of abuse and the importance of vigilance, compassion, and justice in addressing and preventing such acts within all communities, including faith-based organizations. The hope is that through these painful revelations and subsequent actions, positive changes will be made to protect the vulnerable and ensure that faith communities remain safe and nurturing spaces for all members. As the situation at Gateway Church continues to unfold, it provides an opportunity for other religious institutions to reflect on their own practices and policies regarding the handling of abuse allegations, the importance of establishing and maintaining a culture of transparency and accountability cannot be overstated. Religious leaders must recognize their moral and ethical responsibility to protect their congregants, especially the most vulnerable, and to respond to allegations of abuse with the utmost seriousness and integrity. Educational programs and training for church staff and volunteers on recognizing and reporting abuse are essential in fostering a safe environment. Implementing clear and accessible reporting mechanisms will encourage individuals to come forward without fear of retribution or dismissal. Additionally, Partnerships with local authorities and child protection agencies can help ensure that allegations are investigated thoroughly and appropriately with the welfare of the victim as the primary concern. The role of the congregation in supporting survivors of abuse is also crucial. Creating a supportive and compassionate community where victims feel heard and validated can significantly impact their healing journey. Churches can offer resources such as counseling services, support groups, and pastoral care to assist survivors and their families. It is important for church members to stand in solidarity with victims, advocating for justice and holding leaders accountable. 
In addressing past failures and moving forward, Gateway Church and other religious institutions can take proactive steps to prevent future incidents of abuse. This includes regular reviews and updates of policies and procedures, ongoing education and training, and a commitment to transparency and accountability. By fostering a culture of openness and integrity, churches can build a foundation of trust and safety for all members. The impact of these allegations extends beyond the immediate church community, affecting the broader perception of religious institutions. The actions taken by Gateway Church in response to these allegations will be closely watched by other faith communities and the public, demonstrating a genuine commitment to addressing and preventing abuse and supporting survivors can help restore faith in the integrity and moral leadership of religious institutions. Ultimately, the goal is to create a safe and nurturing environment where individuals can worship and grow in their faith without fear of abuse or exploitation. The lessons learned from the events at Gateway Church can serve as a catalyst for positive change, inspiring religious institutions to prioritize the well-being and safety of their members. By embracing a culture of accountability, transparency, and compassion, faith communities can fulfill their moral and ethical responsibilities and provide a sanctuary for all who seek spiritual guidance and support. In this journey towards healing and restoration, it is essential to remember the core values of faith, hope, and love. These principles can guide the actions and decisions of church leaders and members as they work towards creating a safe and supportive community. Through collective efforts, religious institutions can uphold their sacred duty to protect and nurture their congregants, ensuring that their places of worship are truly safe havens for all.